hey it's me so today as you can tell from the title um we're gonna be beating some eyebrows <laughs> now this is something that i've been wanting to do for uh quite a while um i'm not gonna go into the full story because i've already told it a whole bunch of times so if you don't know why i'm beating eyebrows i'll just i'll go ahead and link the video right here so what i did in that video was i glued each bead on um and in more ways than one i later you know kind of learned that that wasn't the best practice it was more so something that i did because i i wanted to get that perfect eyebrow shape and there isn't really a way to string beads together in that perfect shape without um, actually beading them onto some sort of interfacing or material that may be visible when you stick it onto your skin. With that being said, after the video launched and a lot of people seen it, not only did I get requests for reusable options for people to like purchase, I also got a lot of suggestions on how to make a reusable beaded eyebrow of actual option. A lot of people suggested I use a loom. Again, a loom creates like a, a straight piece and there is an arch in my brow. And then other people suggested like a brick stitch, which is exactly what I ended up picking. So if you don't know how to do a brick stitch, you know, I'll give like the most basic instructions when I show you how to make the brow, but I'll go ahead and link some informational videos in the description area so that you can go and check those out. The materials that uh, you need are just some Nemo thread. Here I have size B. I know a lot of people use other sizes. Um, this is just the kind that I have because I, it's what I picked up, honestly. Uh, some scissors and I use uh, size 11 seed beads. And then what's also very helpful is some uh, beading, like bead graph paper. Um, the kind where it's rows and columns, not the peyote kind where it's like that. <laughs> so real quick before we get started, um, I've made a few different pairs of reusable eyebrows. I haven't had a chance to make kind of like an inventory of them yet because I've been busy with school, but yesterday was my last day. I'm officially a graduate. So these are the ones that I made myself. I made them to match my regalia actually. I also made these thicker than the ones that I made in the original video and added more of an arch so that they match my natural eyebrow more. I also have another pair here that I made. Yeah, I made them like one bead thicker and I made them straighter with less of an arch. Um, and I just did this because of the way that this person's eyebrows were shaped. So, yeah, they just kind of do that. The kind of eyebrow that I'm going to be doing in this video today will be this arched version. Um, and I'll, you know, show you exactly how to make this one. But if your eyebrow is more like straight or it's thinner, you know, all you have to do is just kind of subtract or add beads here and there. If you want to like play around with different shapes, that's okay too. Um, I think that that makes the most sense for people who don't have eyebrows or who plan on blocking their eyebrows with glue. But if you plan on applying your eyebrows directly onto the hairs, then obviously you need to choose a shape that kind of matches your natural eyebrow shape because you need to be able to actually cover your eyebrow Otherwise, um, you know, if you don't, then you'll have like your hair be visible and it won't look cute, right? So with that being said, I realized that I haven't talked on my channel uh, about gluing eyebrows directly towards your hair. Um, I know in my original video, I thought that that just sounded like blasphemous. You can't ever do that. You need to cover your eyebrows with glue. I kind of retract that statement. <laughs> I think that you can glue it directly to your hair and um, it was actually a good friend of mine that suggested that I try it. And I discovered that it is totally possible when you go to take them off. So it, like when you go to take them off, you obviously can't just like pull them off your head. You will pull out your hairs because you know, there's glue bonding your hairs to the beads, but you can use some sort of makeup remover to kind of break up that bond uh, and break up the glue and then it it works, trust me. So, I mean, I just have some like micellar water um, 
whatever kind of makeup remover you use, I think it's good. And that's because the type of lash glue, well, I just gave it away. The type of glue that I used was lash glue, which is a makeup, it's a type of makeup and makeup remover can break the bond of lash glue. Okay, um, so I think with that being said, I've talked way too long. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera and let's get started. Okay, so here I have a couple different examples of some like sketched out beaded eyebrows. These ones are actually, um, they were examples that I provided for uh, Inanuk. So these are like Inuk designs. Um, this is actually the eyebrow that I have created. Now you notice that although it looks like a flat line, um, at this point is kind of where the arch begins. So like right here is where the arch begins on this eyebrow. Um, these straight ones, these are, I think they're six beads thick and then let's see, they're about 25 beads long um, before you begin the arch. So you can kind of like look at these and create like a straight uh, brow, but we are going to create an arched one. I'm not going to do this exact design. I'm going to use a different design. So last night I went ahead and sketched out sort of a design that I plan on using. Unfortunately, I don't have any markers with me. <laughs> so I just, um, you'll have to see what colors I use at the moment, but it is five beads thick and 21 beads long before we get started on the arch. Um, and something to keep in mind, these are size 11 seeds, seed beads. So if you end up using a bigger bead, like a size nine, then you're going to have to reduce uh, kind of the amount of beads that you use. So you might have to use like four beads thick and like, I don't know, 15 beads long. And then if you use smaller beads, like, I don't know, size 13s or 15s, then obviously you're going to have to use more beads. So yeah, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take your thread and do a really long, long. So I just took some thread that was about the length of my arm. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and grab a needle. Okay, so I have my needle threaded and I have my uh, mapped out eyebrow in front of me. The first thing that we're going to do is get started on this first row of the brick stitch. Um, and the colors I'm going to be using are blue and silver. So the circled parts are going to be silver and then the negative is going to be blue. So I'm going to load up uh, four blue beads and one silver bead. And I'm also going to start from the, the bottom. So I'll do the four blue beads first and then the silver bead. Okay. And when you start a brick stitch, um, I guess, I don't know. The way I do it is kind of difficult, <laughs> honestly. Um, some people form some sort of stopper before they get started on it. I just like to sort of wrap it around my finger a few times and then um, hold it. When you start a brick stitch, um, this is the thread. It's in this direction, so like, the needle is on the side of the thread. <laughs> um, and then you're going to go into the second bead furthest from the needle and then put your needle in it in the direction that goes towards the needle. Hopefully that makes sense. So you do that and then pull it. Okay. And then here you see they sort of lie next to each other. If you pull it too tight, then you might cause like an imbalance between um, the thread on either side of it. You can kind of get a little closer. So here's a thread on this side and here's a thread on the other side. If you pull one of these threads too tightly, then you're going to end up uh, kind of pulling one of those sides too tight and it'll end up with your beads looking wonky. So your next step after that is to go into the next bead and do the same thing. 
put it through the bead in the direction of the needle and then you will continue on. Okay, so I just kind of like went through and adjusted any uh, pieces of thread that were like too loose or too tight. And I have my first row completed. Um, so now we are technically like at the bottom of the row. So again, I'm going to load on from the bottom. So I'll go three blue beads, one silver, and then another blue bead. Um, but we're not gonna load them all at once like we did before, we're gonna add one at a time. Now the way that we add each bead, we're actually going to go through each of these threads here that are in between the beads. And if you notice, because there's five beads, there are only four threads. And we want to maintain a consistent five beads throughout until we get to the arch, right? So I'm actually going to add one bead to the first thread and then two beads to the second thread and then one bead for the rest. So um, I'm going to start with the blue, as you can see right here in the second row. Blue is the color. I'm going to stick it through that thread. Uh, it might help to also like change directions. Um, and then once I stick it through the thread, I'm going to bring it through the bead um, from the bottom to the top, I guess, if that makes sense. Okay, so there's that. Gosh, I hope you can see all of this. <laughs> um, next, I'm going to do, our next bead is blue, so I'm going to add it to the second thread Let's see if I can get closer. All right, we're going to go through the thread. And what I mean by bottom up, um, so what I mean by the bottom up <clears throat> is if you notice, here's the second bead that we laid down. If you notice the surface of the bead that kind of rests against the line of beads there, um, that would be the bottom. And then the surface of the bead that is not next to other beads, that would be the top. So we're going to go in through the bottom. And then pull it nice and tight, but not too tight. So if you notice, you sort of end up with like a deduction here. It becomes angled off and you want it to be straight. So this is why we're going to add another bead to the second one. The next color is again going to be blue. So I'll grab a blue bead. And I'm going to add it. Um, let's zoom in again. I'm going to add it to the same thread that I did the previous. Our next color is going to be a silver. So I'm going to move on next to the next thread. So that would be the third thread. No beads have been added to it yet. Bottom up. And then I'm going to add the last bead, which is a blue. This bead is going to be added to the fourth thread, the last one that has had no beads added to it yet. So the only thread that we're going to add um, two beads to will be the second one in each row. And that is even if you change direction. Okay, so right here is the top and then here's the bottom. 
So now when I'm looking at my graph paper, I'm actually going to add from the top now. So I am in the third row. I'm going to do two beads and then a silver and then two beads. So again, I'm going to just show you one more time. We're gonna add a blue bead in that space. Okay, and then go in bottom up. Oops. Pull tight. Okay, and then when we add another bead, we're gonna go into the second space. Bottom up. Sometimes it's easier to kind of like change directions of uh, how you hold your needle. But we're still going bottom up. And then pull tight. And then we're going to add another bead to this same thread. And then when we add our next two beads, we're going to move on to the next threads. Sometimes it just helps to kind of uh, do whatever you're comfortable with, like how you hold it, how you enter the needle through. Oops. All right, um, now here's something that I haven't showed you yet. Instead of entering them in um, downward, I'm actually just going to take the project and I'm going to flip it. And then I will work back up. Once I do that, then I'll go ahead and flip the project again so that I am always working upward. And that's just my preference. It doesn't really impact the project in a huge way. Um, it might keep it more straighter. That way you're not only adding two beads in this row. <laughs> You'll be adding two beads in either um, this one or this one. So yes, I'm going to enter from the bottom this time. <clears throat> so that would be one blue bead and then a silver and then two blue beads and then another silver. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, do like a time lapse until I get to the arch and then I'll come back. Okay, so here I have sort of the finished main block of the eyebrow. Um, and at this point is where we're going to begin our arch. Now, notice that this thread here is on the bottom of the brow and this was totally done on purpose. Um, that's why I had a start uh, from the bottom here. Um, and that's because this thread at the very top we're not going to use that. And if our thread here, if it was on the top, then we would have to use that in order to get to this next one, or we would just have a really long thread and it, it would look silly. So I think depending on how many beads that you used, here we used 21 beads, so it came uh, on the bottom. If you didn't use 21 beads and you used a different number of beads, I would kind of try and factor in 
where this thread would end up as you design like how you start your project. Let's say if we designed our project to be 20 beads then we would end up on the top. So yeah. So let's get started on the arch. Now looking at my graph paper here this is where the arch begins. And we're basically reducing down to four beads instead of five right here. So beginning from the bottom, we're gonna do two blue, one silver, and then another blue. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of adding two beads in the middle like I have been, I'm actually going to add two beads on the first thread. That is uh, the space that is on the bottom there and that will create uh, sort of this downward angle here. So I have my tail. I'm going to wrap it around my finger a few times just to kind of help me hold the project. And then I'm going to add the first blue bead to that bottom space, that bottom thread, just like I have been bottom up. And then I'm gonna grab my next blue bead and I'm gonna put that in the same space, that same bottom thread. Okay, so now the third bead is silver and I'm going to move on to the next space and add it there. So this would be the second from the bottom. And then the fourth bead is blue. We're going to move on to the next space and add it there. <clears throat> and notice that there's a thread left right here. We are not going to be adding any beads to it. Oops, I, I think I just knocked my microphone, I'm sorry. We're not going to be adding any beads to this last thread here. So um, we're just gonna leave that be. Turn the project. Okay, and then we're going to add the next row of four, which is going to be the same. It's gonna be one blue bead, silver, and then two blue beads. We're just adding it from the top. Um, and again, we want the, <clears throat> when we add two beads in a space now, it will always be on that uh, bottom. So since we're starting from the top, we're just going to add one. So I'm going to add my one blue bead. Oops, I kind of. Okay, and now I'm going to add the silver bead to the next space. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add a blue bead to the next space, which is the last space. And then the last blue bead, I'm going to add to that very same space. At this point, you can already kind of see an arch forming. All right, so then I'm gonna turn my project and add two beads in the first space and then continue uh, the line of four. Now, we are going to be reducing the amount of beads that we use in this arch as well. So eventually we're going to only use three beads and then two and then one. Um, so here we're gonna do the same thing for two more rows. We need four rows total that have four beads. Right now we are on the third row. Uh, 
Um, and I forgot to look at my pattern actually. So we're on the third row. And this one's gonna be a little different. Um, we're going to do one blue bead and then the silver and then two blue. So basically the silver is just gonna kind of like bump down a column. Uh, so the next bead's gonna be silver. <clears throat> that would be the second bead I'm adding. And I'm going to put it on the first uh, space that that blue thread was already added to. And then the remaining two blue beads are going to be put in the next spaces that don't have any beads added to them yet. Of course, I always have to like fiddle with these beads because they're so small. Okay, I'm gonna turn the project over. So now I'm working from the top. Um, this fourth row here is the same. Working from the top, we're gonna do two blue beads, a silver, and then a blue. Um, and again, you know, I hope I'm not repeating myself too much, but I just wanna be ultra clear in this video. Um, since we're working from the top, we are not going to be adding two beads yet so we'll add the one blue bead in this space um the next blue bead in the next space and then the silver and blue bead that are remaining will be added in the last space And I'm just going through this a whole lot because when you flip your project over, um, you don't want to forget like what side of it is the top and what side is the bottom, especially when you're being really particular with what direction you're trying to uh, make your beads go. All right, so flip the project and now we're on the bottom again. And here is where we're going to do another reduction <laughs> in the width um, because we've done four rows of beads that have four columns. Um, so now we're going to reduce to three. And this one should be fairly simple because it's, uh, it's just blue, silver blue. We're going to add two on the very bottom. So we'll add the blue bead. Goodness, if I can. <laughs> and then the silver bead we will add in the same space. And then the next bead we will add in the next space. Come here. And because we are reducing from four beads to three beads, this last space right here, whoops, this last space right here, we're not going to be adding a bead to that. Flip the project. Again, being cognizant of what direction you're beating from. We are beating from the top. So the first bead that we add here is going to be the only bead on this thread. The second bead, we're gonna move on to the next thread. And then the third bead we're going to put it on the same thread. Okay, so here I've done two rows of beads uh, that have three columns. Uh, and there's one, two, three, four, five, just like this. And then the sixth row is going to have all blue beads. 
so I just need to do four more just like this and I will check back in. Okay, so I've done the full five rows with three beads um, that have a blue on the outside and silver on the middle. Now I'm going to do the last row with three beads, which will be all blue. I'm sure you guys get how to do a row of three at this point, but I just wanted to point out like the change in pattern. Um, so yeah, working from the top, I'm gonna add one bead and one space, and then two beads in the bottom space. Um, and again, similar to how I sort of timed out where I would do a deduction in the 22nd row, you also have to be cognizant of when you do other deductions for the remainder of the, uh, the arch here because you never want your thread here, you never want it to be on the top. Because when you do a deduction, you want to always add from the bottom when doing a deduction. Okay, so now we're on the last row of uh, the three. I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Okay, here we are, we're on the last row with three beads. Now what I need to do is deduct to two beads. And we're only gonna do one row of that. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a blue bead. I'm just taking a moment to search for um, a good one because these blue beads have been kind of inconsistent in their width and it's kind of messed with my pattern just a little bit, but oh well. Um, <clears throat> so once you pick up that first blue bead, you're going to add it to the first space. Now notice because there are only three beads right here, we only have two spaces. Um, so when we pick up our second blue bead, we're not going to move on to the second space. We're actually going to add it to the same space. Okay. So again, this last space here, the second one, we're going to basically ignore that and not add anything. And here we're going to put in the finishing bead. I suggest a nice thick one. There's only one space left, so we're not going to add any more after this. Okay, so here is the brow. And now what we have to do is finish it off. So hopefully this next part, I make some sense. Now, as you can see, I'll use this one. This one might be easier to see. As you can see, there's some like threads that are visible. And the same is true for the very last row, the, this one little bead here. So hopefully you can see I'm going to drive my needle through it. There's a thread visible on one side of it. Okay, so when you pull it tight, it's still just a little visible. Now to finish this off, I kind of want to drive the needle through a couple more beads like backwards. Um, but I don't want to go in this direction specifically because of the fact that this visible thread is on that side. Um, I imagine that one would kind of have the logic that you would want to go that way because then you won't have visible thread on either side of it. However, it kind of will end up being a little wonky like that. So... You want to go in on the other side, back into that bottom bead. 
um, go ahead and you can I'm just gonna go in through that one bottom bead there okay and then um, I want to go backwards quite a few beads I'm gonna go ahead and go on this bottom one again the next bottom one I mean Okay, keeping sure that you uh, pull it nice and tight because it might still loosen. Um, and then you can, I guess, alternate directions. So I'm going to go in through the middle bead. And if you alternate uh, directions like that, it will sort of... Um, Kind of really, it's kind of like tying a really good knot. Okay, so I basically just went backwards like the entire arch. Um, depending on how comfortable you are, this should be suffice uh, to go ahead and just clip the thread right here um, just for the sake of demonstration I'm gonna go ahead and do a knot as well so <clears throat> if you want to tie a knot just to be extra secure then you're going to want to try to dig into the thread right next to it it's like in the bottom there okay dig into that and then Go up in the hoop, pull tight, and then go into the next bead. Again, like continuing to go backwards, and then you'll clip from there. Okay, so there's that. Um, and then we have to finish off the tail so take your needle off of the string that you had before so here I'm gonna go up I'm gonna go up and go to the next one um I think I'm gonna go into the one right next to it again before I change the direction these if I can being careful not to and then I'm gonna go one step down one step down and over depending on how far back you go um, again the same rule on the other side you can either just clip it or you can dig into an underlying piece of thread tie a knot And then after you tie the knot, go into the next bead. And then cut. And there we go. Okay, now we're on the home stretch here. Um, obviously, you're going to want to make two of these, um, and I, I haven't made the other one, but this is what you end up with. Um, so real quick, I just want to demonstrate how you would apply this. I'm not going to be blocking up my brows this time, like I said before. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it straight onto my uh, eyebrows. Um, so here I'm using eyelash glue. And then you can kind of use whichever types of brushes that you want. Here I have like a pencil brush, here's like a pointed brush, and then an angled brush. I'm going to choose the angled brush. Um, so what you'll do is take some of your eyelash glue, 
and then apply just like a little bit in the center. You don't want to apply too much. Okay. And then take your brush and like spread it around. All right, so two things to note, you really want to get it on the points and on the end, making sure not to let it pull up in between the beads. You want it like on the surface of the bead. Let it kind of get a little tacky just for a moment, so don't apply it right away. All right, so it's nice and tacky. So when you apply it, you don't want to do it straight. You kind of want to arch it up just a little bit or just, you know, follow your natural eyebrow shape. Press it on, hold it there, kind of press around. And voila, it's there. You've made an eyebrow. <laughs> So yeah, this is the eyebrow. Obviously I haven't made the other one yet, so we're just gonna pretend that it's, you know, there. <laughs> okay, so something that I wanted to point out while I was gluing is that you really wanna pay attention to this corner, this corner, this point here, and the end. You really wanna make sure that those points get a good coating of glue on them because those will be the ones that will sort of pop up if you don't. Um, and then when you go to take it off, as I mentioned before, you can just take a bunch of makeup remover and um, either take a brush and kind of apply it. Or uh, if you use like makeup remover pads or wipes even, you can kind of just like work your way. That way it can really get underneath and break up the glue. So yeah, I hope you guys really give this a try. Um, if you have any like tips and tricks on how you would bead this, you know, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And then you watching, if you need some tips, some tips or some tricks, you can go into the comments and look for those. Um, so if you try it, let me know. I really wanna see what kind of designs you come up with. Um, and yeah, I hope this was helpful or entertaining or whatever you want it to be. And I'll see you on the next one. Bob and Pete Guadman.